Good morning. This is Andre Restaino. I'm the Managing Director of the ISA 100 Wireless Compliance Institute. You're attending a webinar entitled Developing an ISA 100 Wireless Certified Product. Our presenters today are Jay Werb, he's the Technical Director of the ISA 100 Wireless Compliance Institute. He manages the organizational technical project compliance programs and also helps to set uh, our the strategy for uh, the ISA 100 wireless uh, technology. Jay was the editor and author of the data link, which is the mesh section of the ISA 100.11a standard during the original committee process. He has more than 30 years experience in the computer field with over 20 years uh, focused on wireless. As a technical founder of multiple technology companies, he's been granted more than 10 patents. He holds a BS in biology and an MS in management from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Our speaker from Murata is Ruhe Nakai. He's a senior application engineer from Murata and he most recently acted as a project leader in developing Murata's ISA 100 wireless module. He's also worked as a sales engineer for their connectivity modules. Ruhe has a Master's of Applied Physics from La Cita University. So, I'll give a few fast facts and then turn it over to our presenters. So, uh, ISA 100 wireless is an international standard, IEC 62734, it was approved in uh, 2014, compliant with the Etsy EN300-320 version 1.1 uh, standard uh, for, it uh, predominantly addresses coexistence in the 2.8 gigahertz uh, range. Many people call this listen before talk. Our portfolio today exceeds 44 devices and is uh, growing. Uh, we have over 25 devices certified and that's growing. Uh, we have a, uh, a unique first in the industry in April 2015, Gas Secure Gas uh, Detector achieved uh, SIL2 certification uh, as a wireless application. So that I say 100 wireless we focus on certification, and uh, certification is uh, important to ensure interoperability and best-in-class solutions for end users. Some people ask, why certify? So, uh, we number one is uh, we're uh, certifying conformance to the uh, 62734 standard. Um, customers ask for it. Uh, gives choices and provides flexibility. It means that any uh, ISA 100 uh, wireless compliant device is going to work in any other network. So just the same as uh, Wi-Fi uh, certifies 802.11 radios in our mobile phones, laptops, etc. We do the same for ISA 100 wireless. Imagine how frustrated you would be if you show up at an airport and you try to get your email and you can't get a Wi-Fi connection because uh, certification conformance is not being enforced. So we have a big focus on it. So today there's uh, ISA 100 wireless modules, communication modules or stacks. They're available from four suppliers. Uh, the first stack that was produced was from Nivis. That's been around since 2009. The uh, newest stack is uh, Murata, and Murata will be presenting today. And a couple of the big uh, supplier organizations, Yokogal and Honeywell, both have uh, communication stacks, and we typically see them uh, implemented with their partners. But they will uh, engage and and uh, sell their communication models and stacks. So this year was. Uh, a good year for new devices. There's over, there was 15 um, ISA 100 wireless uh, devices added this year. Uh, more than half of them have been certified uh, up to this point. 
and uh, the remainder are expected to be certified sometime between now and uh, the end of the year. So I encourage you to visit the ISA 100 wireless website. There's a lot of information there. There's a recent paper that uh, our technical director, Jay Work, uh, authored. It's available for download. Um, there's uh, news and details about the, the demo at the June 2015 Akama Exposition in Frankfurt. Uh, in that, at that exposition, uh, we implemented three live networks with 36 devices from 17 vendors. I had mentioned previously our focus on uh, conformance certification. Well, these 36 devices from 17 vendors were uh, shipped to the show, all installed in the network on Saturday, and up and running in the one day. So, also, uh, so there's a full list of the registered devices on the website, uh, lots of great use cases and customer stories. And um, there's the website uh, receiving over 20,000 web views a month. Okay, so I'll turn it over to our presenters today, Jay Werb and Rui Nakai. All right, thank you, Andre. Um, just to put this in context, this is the second introductory webinar in a series. Um, back in July 2015, we gave a general introduction to ISA 100 Wireless, and today we're going to talk about how people develop ISA 100 Wireless certified products. Um, we're going to start by discussing the overall development process that people usually go through. Then we're going to look at some available technologies that will help instrument vendors quickly build ISA 100 products. And as a case study, Murata will cover their new module. Um, then we're going to review WCI certification program. And finally, we'll wrap up with a quick description of WCI marketing programs that help people launch and promote their newly certified products. And it looks like we should have 10 to 15 minutes for questions and answer at the end, if all goes according to schedule. Okay. Um, this is a nice graphic we use to show a typical development process when a technical team is building a new ISA 100 wireless device. Um, starting at the left, most people will start with the research phase where they review options and feasibility. And to support these activities, WCI has technical seminars like this one, and we also arrange demonstrations at major industry events. Um, down at the bottom, module suppliers start to get involved at this stage, and they generally offer demonstration or evaluation systems and also provide technical support so that people can understand what the, what the development process looks like. Okay. Then there's the decision to go ahead where you have a development phase, and that's where a vendor decides to actually develop an ISA 100 product. WCI has specifications and also has technical support, um, especially related to the specifications and help with the certification program. Um, the development phase is also when ISA 100 wireless module is integrated into a product. The module comes from one of several module vendors and comes with development tools and support programs that are specific to those, to whatever module you're using. Um, support programs generally cover a, a wide range depending on what the vendor's requirements are. Some vendors want to take a complete do-it-yourself approach and others want someone else to do it for them and they outsource most of their development and there are programs to around to support the full range of development approaches. Um, then we get the certification, and that's when all the ISA 100 functions are working correctly, the device can be certified. Um, and for that phase, WCI offers test tools that run exactly the same software that is used in our certification, so that when the device is submitted to WCI, there should be no surprises because the vendor has already run through exactly the same process in their own labs. 
Um, now, module suppliers greatly simplify the certification step because they provide a stack that is already certified. So that way, the device certification can be focused on features that are specific to the device. For example, if the device publishes analog data, the certification will check that the publication function works correctly. But the stack is already certified, so we don't have to check all those hundreds of things again. Um, this approach results in a very rigorous certification that is also very efficient. Um, and then after the product is certified, WCI offers marketing programs to help with product release and promotion. So with that introduction, let's move on to a discussion of building an ISA 100 device. Okay. Um, this slide just shows in a very general way the main considerations that usually come up in the development of an ISA 100 wireless device. In some cases, the device supplier already has a wired version of their product, and in that case, they need to add an antenna and a battery to make it wireless. Um, sometimes the device supplier is converting a wireless device to ISA 100 wireless, and in those cases, it might already have an antenna and a battery, but in any case, those two, those two aspects need to be dealt with somehow. Um, we don't have time today to cover power sources and antennas in any detail, but just to quickly go through it, for power sources, almost everybody uses a lithium vinyl fluoride battery of some kind. And for antennas, um, they generally need to find an explosion-proof antenna and make sure it gets mounted vertically so that it has, um, so that it operates well with the other antennas that are usually also mounted vertically in the system. Um, the diagram also shows that an encryption key needs to be entered into the device somehow. Now, it's possible to provision an encryption key through the wireless interface, but generally WCI recommends including a simple infrared port for more key, for more secure key provisioning. Um, adding the infrared involves a little extra electronics and some software, and it also involves including a little infrared window somewhere in the device. Um, then, of course, you need a wireless radio and protocol, and that's what we show to the right, and we show that the wireless module is a buy and the device application is a build. Um, generally, the device developer will solve the, the stack problem by buying a WCI certified radio module that implements a fully certified ISA 100 stack. That module should also be compliant with radio laws and regulations. So with these issues solved by the module supplier, the device developer can focus on developing a device application. Um, so as, we, as I mentioned before, the, so the diagram shows the wireless module is a buy, which is typically the case, and the device application is a build. There are other, there are other possibilities, particularly for very big vendors, but, this, but that split is typical. Okay. Um, this diagram shows a typical device application called the user application process, or UAP. The device publishes some sensor data periodically, for example, every 15 seconds, and the ISA 100 wireless object in the ISA 100 wireless object module, this is accomplished through a concentrator object. Um, in the example we show here, the concentrator object is configured to collect data from a temperature sensor, a pressure sensor, and a contact. The concentrator object bundles these sensor readings together and then publishes it to the ISA 100 stack every 15 seconds in this example. The message is constructed by the UAP, and then the ISA 100 wireless module handles the rest. So generally, the module provider offers, generally the module supplier offers sample code for the common functions like those shown on this slide, so that the device supplier has a, has a good starting point for building their applications. This slide shows various stack technologies that can be used for developing ISA 100 wireless devices. The first stacks and modules were from a company called Nivus. These industrial wireless stacks have been available for about five years, and many certified devices have Nivus technologies inside. 
Software is also available for building complete systems, not just devices. Um, the Nivus technology is available through two resellers, Centero and CDS. Honeywell certified its own stack, also in 2010. The Honeywell stack is now used, and I think, in all certified Honeywell products. Um, Yokogawa recently certified an integrated stack and antenna module that we'll talk about a little later. Um, that is being used in some recently cert released Yokogawa products. Um, moving down the list, Murata has a new module that was developed in collaboration with Yokogawa. Um, Murata has joined us for this presentation and they will describe this technology on the next few slides. There is also an open source version of the ISA 100 stack. This software is an uncertified version of the stack that was posted in 2000, 2013, I think, yes. It was intended for research and development projects, and to my knowledge, open source has not been used in a commercial product at this time. Um, there are also new stack technologies in the pipeline. Um, I know of at least three that are under development, and I've heard rumors of more. Um, and details about any details about these future stacks are confidential at this time. Okay, so as a case study, let's take a closer look at the Murata stack technology. So I'll give the microphone to Ruhei Nakai from Murata, and he joins us from Japan, where it is now 12:30 at night. Thank you. Okay, so thank you for your introduction. Uh, my name is Yuhei Nakai, working at Murata Manufacturing in Japan. So first, thank you very much for joining uh, this webinar. So uh, in my section, main purpose is to introduce uh, our IST 100 wireless module. But before that, I would like to introduce the company of Murata briefly. And uh, Murata is an electric component maker established in 1944. Uh, we are offering the research, design, manufacturing, and supply of electric components and solutions. All sales amount in financial year 2040 is about $9 billion because of good condition in communication business area. And also we have uh, 105 subsidiaries all over the world, and also we have a good relationship with many distributors. So you can buy our product anywhere. Please go to the next page. And uh, you might be familiar to Murata as a positive component maker, but uh, wireless module is one of our main product recently. Actually, sales by communication module amounted to about 30% in Murata total sales. So in terms of uh, wireless module, we are offering small, very small size and good performance and good quality by utilizing special packaging technology, simulation technology, software, and a stable production line based on a lot of experience and know-how. As a result, we achieve about 60% 60, 60 market share in connectivity module for mobile market. Please go to the next page. So this figure shows the Murata wireless module coverage for IoT. Uh, at the moment, we have several types of wireless module, like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Bluetooth Low Energy, Jigubi, and Ygig. So you, we can propose a suitable solution to customers' uh, requirement or application. And we think adding ISA 100 wireless solution into our production lineup is a big advantage for achieving business opportunity in advanced op op uh, process automation market. Please go to the next page. And uh, for developing reliable ISA 100 wireless module and providing it to the market quickly, we have established an alliance with Yokogawa, who is a global provider of cutting-edge process automation. In this alliance, Yokogawa 
we rely on, we license its technology, IEC stack to us, and we Rota will develop the world's communication module by using our specific technology and know-how. Next page, please. And uh, here is the overview of the, our wireless ISA 100 wireless module called Type 1EU. Type 1EU is a fully integrated 2.4 gigawatts module featuring low power radio design. All of all RF components as well as IS stack are integrated into the, our wireless module to support ISA 100 wireless. So external components like uh, capacitors, inductors, and oscillators are not needed to operate our uh, wireless module. So just put a couple of resistance in order to select uh, internal LDO usage or serial mode to operate uh, our module or bolate for UART communication. And uh, the light figure shows the software block, light, block diagram. Uh, IS stack in our module includes a Mac, data link, network, transport, application subreader, and DMAP. However, uh, it doesn't include UAP. So external application processor is needed to operate our wireless module. The next page, please. This table shows the spec of our wireless module. Module size is a 31.0 by 21.0 millimeter and the height is 6.1 millimeter max. And the package type is LGA. So the other details are described in the data sheet and the application note. So I don't want to explain the detail in this webinar. So if you want to know the details, please contact us. And the contact information will be provided later. Please go to the next page. For our wireless module, we are offering, uh, preparing an evaluation tool, evaluation board, and the RF test tool. And the IST stack in our module supports RF test mode. So by utilizing our RF test tool and the evaluation board, customer can operate our module as a specific mode, like a continuous TX mode without modulation, with modulation, or RX mode, and so on. So I think it's uh, very useful to check the RF performance for getting certification. And also our evaluation board comes with UAP sample. So our evaluation board can be joined to the actual ISC network and uh, behave as a field device. For our test system, we are using a Yokogawa gateway and backbone router. So if you use Yokogawa uh, product, you can confirm that our evaluation board upload temperature data by, pub, uh, by publish function. <coughs> Please, next page. <coughs> and uh, this page shows the structure of a UAP sample in our evaluation board. Our UAP sample has UAP MO, CO, and AI. But uh, it doesn't have UDO, DO, AO, BO, and B, BI. But uh, so <clears throat> the function is very limited. But the uh, basic function like uh, join, contract, and publish can be confirmed. <clears throat> also, uh, UAP sample in source code format can be offered under the software license agreement without fee. So we expect customer use it as a reference to develop UAP for our wireless module. Please go to the next page. Uh, here is a list of our technical documentations. So after contracting NDA, this technical information will be offered. Okay, go to the next page. Okay, so my portion finished.
uh, we believe IEC 100 wireless expands into the wireless sensor network for industrial field, since there are many good futures. And uh, we, Murata, would like to make a contribution to accelerate ISD 100 expansion as module supplier. Thank you. Okay, this is Jay Werb. I'm back. Thank you, Nakai-san. And if you have questions you. for Murata, we'll... If you have questions from Murata, we will have a question and answer period at the end of this webinar. Um, yep. You can enter, how does that work? You can enter the questions. Okay, there is a Q&A field on your user interface. So if you, you can enter, enter questions as you think of them, and then we'll get to them at the end of the webinar. All right. Um, Next slide, please. Good. All right, so just to review, developers can buy certified ISA 100 modules from Murata or from somebody else, and then use sample code as a base to develop their own applications. And so far, we've been focused on the device side, but you'll notice that there's a wireless network gateway, stuff like that on this picture. Um, and that just shows that the device operates as part of a system. Now, some device vendors will partner with an ISA 100 wireless system supplier, and in that case, the ISA 100 standards enables them to build a, just a device that runs in other people's systems. In addition, some suppliers will also want to offer a complete ISA 100 wireless system, including a gateway, access point, things like that. The gateway and access point technology can also be bought or licensed, and we'll show some examples of that in the next few slides. Okay, so just quickly look at some other um, offerings out there. We mentioned earlier that people have been using NIVIS technology since 2010 when it was first certified by WCI. Today, NIVIS technology is available from Centero and CDS. We, sh we show web references up off to the left on the slide. Um, to just very quickly go through what these products are, there's the VersaNode 210 and VersaNode 310, and these are WCI certified modules. The 210 was the original module that continues to be used by some early adopters, and then the VersaNode 310 is the module, basically the module for new customers. Functionally, they are very similar to each other. Um, Next, we see Versa router gateways, and these gateways enable the device suppliers to offer a complete ISA 100 wireless system. Um, and the general idea is that a device supplier can create a certified device and then sell it as part of a system without becoming ISA 100 stack experts. Um, next slide, please. I've oh, got it, okay. This slide shows some more offerings from Centero. Um, in the, the ISA 100.11a development kit is a small system that enables technical evaluation, and the same system can be used in the, in the development phase to integrate ISA 100 wireless modules into your product line. A field tool can be used for provisioning, and the Versa app software development kit is essentially sample code for device developers. Um, there's an enterprise source code package for sophisticated customers who want to build derivative products. And Centero also has various service programs to help people develop their products and get the, and get the product certified. Okay. Um, now here's another interesting and recent development, which is the Yokogawa antenna. Yokogawa has a new communication module with a built-in antenna and it, we certified it earlier this year. Um, as you shown, shown to the right of this slide, the Yokogawa module has an antenna, a wireless circuit with a stack, and a sensor interface all in one package. This technology is already used in some certified Yokogawa products. Um, if you want more information about this technology, you should contact Yokogawa directly. Um, and this isn't exactly a stack technology, but it's worth discussing. There are ISA 100 hard adapters out there, and this slide roughly describes how they work. Um, 
To the right of the diagram circled in red, we show two legacy heart devices wired to, to a controller. And at the same time, these devices report information through the ISA 100 wireless network through heart adapters. Um, Honeywell and Yokogawa each have ISA 100s or heart adapters that will perform this function. And there are also ISA 100 products that handle generic analog inputs, digital inputs, Modbus interfaces, stuff like that. So these technologies can be used to quickly integrate an existing device into an ISA 100 system. These simple integrations can be used as interim solutions while you develop a standalone product that is under development. Um, this slide shows another set of new products coming online soon from, Next, from a company called Nexcom. This product line is focused on the system side with industrial grade gateways and infrastructure. An adapter is also planned in the future. These products can be used by suppliers who want to sell ISA 100 wireless devices as part of a complete solution. Okay. And to wrap up this part of the presentation, I'll quickly review the application architecture of ISA 100 Wireless. Um, this slide is from another webinar we did back in 2011 that is, um, that is on the WCI website. So if you want to see more detail, you can just go to that webinar. Um, so number one, you have, um, yeah, number one, you have application data that usually flows between the field device and the gateway. This data flow is fully secured, and service contracts reserve the network capacity that this flow requires. Um, two, on the lower left, we show ISA 100 wireless native application layer. These are the baseline objects described in the ISA 100 standard. Three, on the upper right, we show a general gateway interface. This is a WCI standardized interface that enables an end user application to securely communicate with the field device using IPv6 addressing. Four, on the upper left, we show WCI defined extensions such as for diagnostics, data monitoring, modeling, temperature pressure, stuff like that. If your device has a feature set that is covered by these extensions, we recommend that you follow those conventions. Fifth, on the upper right, we show a cloud indicating device description. The WCI extension shown in this slide can be exposed, to, to, can be exposed using device descriptions that follow foundation field bus conventions. And the same approach can be used to expose proprietary extensions that are not defined by WCI. So anyhow, we don't have time to explore this slide in much detail today, but it's well covered by the webinar from 2011 that can still be accessed. Okay, now let's suppose you have developed an ISA 100 wireless device, and let's further suppose that your customers are insisting that you get it certified. Um, so how just, exactly how do you get it certified? So, um, when you get your, just to, when you get your device certified, you'll join a growing list of ISA 100 wireless field devices. Just as a quick summary, this slide shows general categories of field devices you'll find in, you know, on the ISA 100 site or in a Google search or in any, any number of ways. Um, so we're showing communication modules, analog transmitters, digital I.O. We talked about heart adapters. Um, there are various types of temperature transmitters, um, a, all kinds of pressure transmitters, vibration monitoring, corrosion monitoring. Several stream trap monitors came on Mars last year. There's a position sensor and a, also a valve positioner, limit switch, radar tank gauge, gas detection, and you know, more, more that are coming online. This is, this is just the, the, main, the main list at the time. Um, there's also infrastructure devices that aren't listed here, such as gateways and access points. Um, the WCI certification programs follows the philosophy shown on this slide. As an example, consider a stack certification. The certification test is an emulation of an ISA 100 wireless system. The system emulation validates hundreds of specific features in the standard. 
a device is certified if it is compatible with the system emulator. So, so basically the certification is almost like a golden unit that everybody has to be compatible with. Um, we also conduct live interoperability tests. And the live interoperability tests basically validate the certification by, de by demonstrating that certified devices interoperate correctly when you put them together. So as we show on this slide, a certification test validates that a single device is compliant with the ISA 100 wireless conventions. And the live inter interoperability test basically validates that the certified devices will work together. Okay. And this slide shows the general structure of a WCI certification. And the main point here is that the module supplier does most of the hard work on this, on this picture. The left side shows the process that applies to a module supplier. Basically, device suppliers don't need to worry about the left side of this diagram. The module supplier takes care of that. So on the left side, the module supplier has a stack that needs to be certified. They license a stack kit from WCI. They conduct a set of pretests until all stacks are passing. Then they submit their module to WCI where we conduct exactly the same tests. When the test is successfully completed by WCI, we archive the text log and the documentation, and then we issue a certificate of compliance for the module. When these steps are completed, the device suppliers can use this module on their devices with pretty good assurance that that is going to be compatible with all other ISA 100 modules. Moving to the right side of the diagram, the device supplier goes through essentially the same process, but on a, but on a smaller scale. The device test kit is a greatly simplified because the stack has already passed. Some additional tests are conducted for the device to cover aspects of the device that are just not, that don't exist in, a, in just a stack. For example, if the device is configured to publish analog data every 10 seconds, um, you, you, that, that operation will be, um, will be tested in the device certification. When the device passes all applicable DTK tests, then we generate test logs and documentations and then issue a certificate of compliance for the device. Next slide, please. Okay. This slide shows another graphic that we use sometimes, which is the same general idea. So looking at the left, the, devi the device supplier's view the device supplier acquires a device kit from WCI and uses it to pretest their device. When the pretest is successful, the device is submitted to WCI for testing. Since the WCI test is exactly the same as the pretest, the device should pass easily. The device supplier then receives the certificate of compliance and can place the ISA 100 wireless compliant logo on the device. All right, so this was just a very quick overview of the certification process. There is more information on the WCI site, and references are provided here on the slide. Okay, next slide. Okay, so, so you've done your research, you developed your product, and received your ISA 100 wireless certification for WCI. At this point, you are ready to introduce your product to the market, and there are WCI programs to help you with that. For an overview of WCI marketing programs, I'll pass the baton back to Andre Restaino, the Managing Director of WCI. Thanks, Jay. Um, so the marketing programs, we have a marketing and operations manager, Mike Braza, and uh, I'll let him walk through the, uh, do it just a quick overview of what we do to help out. Okay, thank you, Andre, thank you, Ruhe, and thank you, Jay. So let's say uh, you've built your device, you've got it certified. Now, how um, can WCI help you launch your device into the marketplace? On this slide, you can see uh, five of our marketing programs. Um, one of our, our best marketing uh, programs and ways to help you is uh, we allow WCI members to host webinars, uh, much like this webinar uh, we're dialed into now, um, WCI mem uh, webinars routinely attract between 100 and 300 viewers. 
and WCI members can host one webinar per year. Now, if uh, the WCI member opts to become part of the paid marketing sponsorship program, you can host multiple webinars per year depending on your sponsorship level. And webinars can cover a variety of topics. You can uh, give a webinar to announce a new product release, to announce a new company service, to announce a new certification, or uh, many other uh, types of announcements. The webinar invitation goes out to ISA's cultivated list of over, of over 100,000 professionals in the process automation industry, and they spend a lot of money keeping this list current and making sure all the leads are up to date. So you really get your message out to a lot of people active in the process automation industry. After the presentation, WCI posts the webinar onto the website, so it's always available on demand for viewing. We also provide the WCI member with a copy of the webinar registration list. So after, you, after you've given your webinar, you've got in your hands a, a pretty great um, leads list that you, can, that you can use to try to drum up some additional business. Next, um, the WCI website is a great marketing tool. The website receives over 20,000 web views per month. Um, uh, WCI members can sponsor a banner on the splash page. You can give us a blog post to talk about a new product or an application or any other kind of technology update you'd like to make. We also post all WCI member products on our product list. And our product list is our most viewed portion of the WCI website, so you get a lot of great exposure there. If you have promo videos for uh, specifically made for your product or company services, we also post those on our website and we'll link those uh, to the WCI YouTube channel. Moving down the list, ISA Insights. ISA Insights is ISA's monthly newsletter that, that they maintain and, and curate content for, and that newsletter is sent out to a list of over 60,000 professionals in the process automation industry, so it's another great um, channel to reach the market. WCI uh, routinely submits monthly updates to the ISA Insights newsletter to cover uh, WCI news. Whenever WCI members have news, uh, they, are, they have an open invitation to uh, submit um, short posts or longer newsletter style posts uh, free of charge. WCI also issues joint press releases. So if you've got a press release you're putting out to announce your new product uh, or your new product certification or just an update of your certification, uh, we will issue a joint press release uh, to help you, uh, you know, redouble your press release's impact. Once the press release is put out, we post that on our website as well for continued exposure. And finally, one of our largest marketing programs are trade shows. WCI uh, routinely attends uh, some of the industry's leading trade shows. Uh, we host technology displays at these trade shows, and members are invited to display product in our booths. Uh, you know, it could, the products can be live, uh, linked into our demos. They can also be static. And WCI members, when they attend the trade shows, it's a great opportunity to mix and mingle with other WCI members to see about building partnerships and getting some great insight into the industry, as well as meeting uh, new business contacts to attend the fair. In fact, the next WCI trade show opportunity is at Jemima, uh, which is in Tokyo, December 2nd through 4th of this year. And Jemima is Japan's largest measurement and control show. All right, that's it for me with marketing opportunities. I will hand the mic back to Andre, who will lead the Q&A session. Thank you. Okay. so. Um... So if you have questions, uh, use the drop-down on the, uh, the right-hand side of your navigation bar at the top of your screen, and uh, we, will, we will answer them. So um, there's a couple questions. One was, uh, um, why, why is IPv6 uh, so important? for this technology, and I'll let Jay answer that one for us. Um, yeah, the, the IPv6 decision is a, um, it's part of a general architecture to be a, inter to have the devices be internet devices, 
uh, right, right, right out to the edge. So there's no addressing limitations, and 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 the device fits cleanly into current and future internet standards. Okay. Um, there's a question about what the certification cost is. So uh, it's published on our website um, for a device certification. There is uh, the lab fee to actually do the work. Uh, that's three thousand dollars. And uh, the actual work, uh, if the device is uh, developed properly and all the submittals are in in uh, in order, it takes about a day. Um, and the then there there is a uh, registration fee, and that uh, so the so the uh, certification lab fee just covers the lab cost. The, and then there's the registration fee, and that um, covers the cost of uh, operating and maintaining the certification program. That's also three thousand. So the uh, device submittal and certification is uh, six thousand dollars. If you're certifying a stack, that's uh, much more involved certification. Um, it's about uh, five times larger in terms of number of test steps and coverage. So the uh, the lab fee for that is uh, nine thousand. So typically, a properly submitted and properly constructed product would take about three days to do the certification. And then there's also a uh, a $9,000 registration fee. So the total cost in terms of uh, uh, fees, lab fees and registration fees is uh, 18000 for a stack. So uh, in terms of uh, developing uh, an ISA 100 certified product, uh, the question is, uh, what what support do we provide? So um, we provide. Uh, if, if you if you just don't know where to start, you just call straight into us, uh, send an email to either Mike Brosd or myself, and uh, we'll guide you through the uh, process um, for uh, development and certification of the product. We'll uh, put you in touch with the uh, component suppliers, like the stack suppliers. And typically, uh, when you get to the point where you're actually developing your product, you're going to be working with the technology providers, part of the ISA 100 wireless ecosystem. Um, so that would be somebody like uh, uh, CDS or Centero, or it might be uh, Murad if you're buying. Uh, communication modular stack from them. We also, uh, as members, uh, we license out uh, ISA 100 WCI IP. That would include things like uh, specifications for uh, interfaces, our implementation specification. Also, um, uh, we sell and support the uh, stack test kit and the device test kit. So. Uh, much of much of what we do uh, in terms of um, the implementation requirements and the certification is embodied in the uh, test kit. So uh, the test by reading what the test requirements are, you get a pretty good understanding of what the implementation requirements are. So. Uh, you know, another question is, uh, what does the ISA 100 wireless certification do, and what tools are used to test and certify? <coughs> so, uh, in 2008-2009, uh, we developed a uh, uh, test kit, and the test kit um, is the basis for our certification. So, we, as Jace said, mentioned. Uh, we certify stacks, and we also certify devices. And uh, we do two separate certifications like that, uh, mainly for economics. There are other uh, consortia that do certifications where uh, the stack functionality is tested when the device is 
submitted. But uh, by certifying the stacks first and separately, if a device supplier uses a certified stack in their uh, device, um, it mitigates the need for retesting all the stack functionality. So, so what what is it? What do you actually get from the certification? Well, the certification proves that the uh, product was implemented according to the um, ISA 100 standard, IEC 62734, and it also ensures that the product's going to interoperate with other uh, compliant ISA 100 products. You know, I always use the example of the Wi-Fi Alliance. Basically, they're certifying uh, 802.11 radios. So, uh, you know, if you have uh, Wi-Fi on your laptop or on your uh, uh, mobile phone, they all work. You turn them on, they can find each other, they connect to networks. There might be a login, but it all works. And so that's what we're doing, but just for the ISA 100 networks. And uh, the customers... Uh, the end user asked for this. They wanted they wanted the uh, product to be able to in, be introduced into their production facilities, and uh, not require a bunch of custom programming. You turn them on, and their networks are supposed to recognize them, um, and uh, you can provision and connect to the network, and then configure the devices. And so uh, this is what our certification does. So we do the certifications, and then the interoperability tests prove that it actually worked. And uh, interoperability tests also, uh, if, if it didn't work right, it, uh, it uh, is a quality assurance process that provides uh, feedback on any blind spots that we may have in our certification and gives us the ability to uh, circle back and update our uh, test kit. Um, can I make one more comment about that? The test kit itself is all XML based, which, which means that in practice it's very transparent what's going on. So it's, it's not a black box. You, you know, there are tons of diagnostics. So you can see exactly what's going into the device, exactly what's coming back from the device, exactly what's being evaluated. So if there, if there is a problem, it's never mysterious. So uh, the other part of the question is who actually does the test? Uh, we do it here. So the products you submit right here were uh, based in uh, the ISA headquarters in Research Triangle Park, North Carolina. Uh, we require two two devices to be submitted, but the lab's right here. So uh, we require two devices uh, for a couple of reasons. One is if something's broken on one of the devices, uh, we can use the second one to do the certification test without holding up the uh, project schedule for you. The other is, is that uh, once the test is done, we archive a device. We put it in inventory. Uh, for the purposes of uh, doing auditing later on. The second device is returned? Yeah, and the second device is returned. So there's another question about, uh, are there tools available to verify the environment in which devices will be deployed? Um, that's Sounds like you're asking about uh, generalized um, uh, electronics and testing devices that are typically used for site surveys. Uh, we don't actually sell them as there, but I know there are tools that are available in the general marketplace. They're fairly generalized, so, uh, but it's not something that we sell. It, w, WCI does have a few SNF does have a few sniffers, 16-channel sniffers, that you can um, use to see what's going on on all 16 channels at the same time. And those are available to be loaned to WCI members if they need them. Um, but I don't think anyone's borrowed it for the last 18 months or so. So, right. so we do have that, and that's around and available. Yeah, typically uh, back suppliers are uh, more interested in the 16-channel sniffer than Correct. Device implementers. That's, yeah, that's that's more of a protocol analysis tool than a than a site survey tool. Yeah. 